home and my son was so happy and excited. Uh, Mom, I, I swept the stairs and I swiffered the stairs and I unloaded the dishwasher and I was like, wow, you know, you really helped out. You did a lot. You even unloaded the dishwasher. And I was like, all right, you know, you want to do some tablet time? Great, go for it. And then I was thinking, you know, I don't remember ever starting the dishwasher. <laughs> and that's because I didn't. <laughs> So that was my morning, um, but he was so happy. Anyway, so also I have a robot announcement coming soon, so stand by, but right now I have lots of laser engravings, so we're gonna get into it. I made one for my cousin who makes amazing hot cocoa. I made one for my son, uh, and I made him a book nook, so it has lots of the characters he likes. And I made one comically for my dad because he was riding in our car and he reached down to what he thought was a chocolate ball, but he was kind of in for a surprise. So um, each one of those will have their own videos. The problem is I want to be able to finish them, but I don't really know what kind of material to use on them. So I went to Lowe's, you know, I was reading on websites, everyone kind of recommended something different. And at Lowe's, it just was overwhelming looking at the walls and just seeing how many options there were. So. I reverted to my engineering tactics and I just grabbed a bunch of different things and figured I'm going to take a blank canvas and laser engrave something. I want to have a variation of pictures and words and I'm going to have 10 different finishing items uh, so I can compare and contrast and see what they look like. So what am I going to laser engrave? Um, where did I go? I went on a family trip uh, to New York and one of the highlights was MoMath, the Museum of Mathematics. And at the time I was working on my degree in applied mathematics, I got this book, The Man Who Loved Only Numbers. Um, who, it's about Paul Erdős, who is one of the most famous mathematicians that you've probably never heard of. Um, I actually heard about him when I was getting my degree in graph theory because my professor has a Paul Erdős, an Erdős number of two. Um, if someone has an Erdős number of one, which is like a coveted number, they've actually written a paper with Paul Erdős. If they have a number two, then they've written a paper with somebody who's written a paper with Paul Erdős, and so on and so forth. And if you've never written a paper like myself, though that is on my bucket list, I just don't want to write a paper that's not worth reading, then you have an Erdős number of infinity. So, infinity for now, maybe one day I'll have a number. But, um, so I'm going to do three images uh, along it, along with the words of each of the things that I'm laser engraving. The three images that I decided that I really liked from the story, um, as a female in, you know, math and science, there are very few females in math and science, so the, there were two other females that really stood out from here as far as like his interaction and just kind of explaining things. So. Um, one was Marilyn Boss Savant, who had a column in Parade, and a lot of mathematicians, there was actually controversy because they were jealous about how, how she was able to interact and engage and earn like a pretty good living uh, based on her column. Um, her claim to fame was that she had the highest IQ on record, 228 in the Guinness Book of World Records. And so she had this column where she had puzzles and mathematical questions, things that people like to read about. One of the controversial um, questions that she put out there was, all right, so there's a game show host, there's three doors, behind the three doors you have two goats um, and two of the doors and one car. And if you guess the door with the car, then you win the car. The question is if, say, you guess door number one and then the game show host says, well, I'll show you what's behind door number two, and it's a goat. Do you change if you are given the opportunity then um, to change to door number three, or do you stick with door number one? Well, what she's saying is that your odds, your probability goes up to 50-50 if you go to door number three. Whereas if you stay with door number one, um, you get 33% chance, you know, one third chance that you're gonna win. So. A lot of mathematicians were actually very angry and writing her saying like, no, this is wrong, this is wrong. Um, but the thing is, you have to expect that you'll be given that answer of, okay, here's one of the doors after what you've picked that it's not behind. So it eliminates one and it really brings it back to a, you know, one and two shot. So it wasn't evident to Erdős either. 
it was true, but um, so I'm gonna do a card to represent, you know, ask Marilyn for the column for Marilyn Beau Savant. The other one that really impressed me was Sophie Germain. So in the 1770s, the War of Terror was breaking out in Europe, and Archimedes actually was drawing in the sand uh, geographical figures, and one of the soldiers had come in and stepped on his figures and stepped on his hand, and he protested, and he's like, get off my figures, and the soldier slayed him right there. And so she had heard about this story, and she wanted something that was so powerful to distract her from the war and everything going on right outside of her room. And so she gravitated towards math. She started reading the mathematical books in her father's library, but her family was not very happy about it. So they started hiding the books, and then she started getting up at night and finding the books, you know, in secret. And they started realizing what she was doing, so they tried to make it harder. They ended up lowering the temperature and taking the clothes away from her uh, at night to try to mitigate her actually getting up and out of bed at night. And she stashed candles so that it's just amazing to me like how much she had to go through to be able to get to mathematics, the thing that she loves. Um, she ended up actually posing like by a male name and writing to Gauss, who was one of the most famous mathematicians you know, at the time, and came up with one variation of a solution to Fermat's theorem. Um, it wasn't completely solved until the 90s, but it, he was very impressed and you know, it was very encouraging towards her. And she ended up being able to return the favor years later when there was invasion. She helped ensure his safety and he didn't realize that who it was until that happened and he was able to figure it out at the time. So he really appreciated the turn of events and the protection. <laughs> so. Um, I'll have a laser engraving of Marilyn Volsavant, the car that represented her question, um, as well as Sophie Germain, as well as Paul Erdős. Paul Erdős was actually from Hungary. He was a very unique, interesting character. It helped him to think about numbers and problems to like go on walks and flap his arms around. So uh, stereotypically, he fit into the, the crazy mathematician. <laughs> He didn't really care much about money. He didn't really want to hold a job. He didn't really want to have a family. All he cared about was traveling from country to country, from mathematician to mathematician, so that he could talk numbers, so that he could solve as many problems as he could. And he gravitated towards like many of the prodigies, the young prodigies, and really tried to inspire them of think of questions and answers to mathematical problems. So um, he was quite famous over the years. I mean, I would love to just live a life where all you are doing is, you know, searching and studying and coming up with intellectual answers <laughs> to problems. So I recommend the book, The Man Who Loved Only Numbers, if you love math and if you like interesting historical stories. But yeah, so I'm excited to do these laser engravings. We're going to see how each of the 10 different types of finishing look um, over time. And yeah, let's go ahead and get laser engraving and adding the finishes.
each one has a different finishing, as you can see. Uh, it was actually really informative. Some of the takeaways, every single one of them has toxic materials that may cause cancer, so be sure to do this in a very well-ventilated space that you're able to leave when it's done to be able to dry so you're not breathing it in. Um, some of them mention that they're potentially flammable or could spontaneously combust, so you want to be careful of the fire and flames that are near it um, and kind of plan based on what you're doing and where you anticipate it being. So we're going to talk about each one and kind of my take on how each of them came out. So the first one I want to talk about are the sprays. They're really similar. This is a water-based mini wax, polycrylic, protective finish, crystal clear finish, ultra fast drying clear matte. And this one's basically the same uh, crystal clear top coat with a clear semi-gloss. So, um, the semi-gloss is on the bottom, the clear matte is on the top. My first takeaway from these is I would never use them again. <laughs> um, I mean, they were really easy to apply. It does recommend three coats, um, but when I actually feel it at the very end, like, it's, it's very rough in texture and it doesn't look good. Like, it's okay if you want something simple, you don't really care about the quality at the end, but I would not use it based on just the rough texture at the end. Moving on. So next we're going to talk about the Premium Oil Min Wax Wood Finish Penetrating Stain Red Chestnut semi-transparent. The dark color of the red chestnut actually kind of reminds me of like my grandma's cabinetry, like very old, old style wood finishing. <laughs> uh, so this one I feel like was the messiest one. As you can see, it actually like bleeds across the edges um, into the other paints and I was using tape to like painter's tape to try to keep things clear. When I moved that painter's tape that was here up to here, it kind of got on the edge up here as well. But you could add a pre-stain condition first for a more uniform color. Then you brush it on and then after like 15 minutes you're supposed to wipe away the excess. It's really dark and so it's really hard to see the laser engraving underneath it. Um, so I wouldn't recommend for both of those reasons. Next, we are going to talk about the Valspar Natural Base One Coat Exterior Stain and Sealer Semi-Transparent. So, that would be the third one up right here. Um, it says shake well and then apply. You want 24 hours of it drying before being able to use. It does recommend tinting it first. I just did it straight on the wood. Um, one thing I notice is that there's a little bit of color that kind of spreads from the laser engraving, so it's not quite as crisp for the words. You don't notice that as much on the drawing. So, um, this is the most natural one, like if you want protection and make it seem like there's nothing on there, but it's still, you know, pretty natural, then this is probably the best option. Um, but I do worry a little bit about, you know, the, the color that seems to bleed from the laser engraving. Next, Canyon Brown. Um, so this is the Valspar One Coat Exterior Stain and Sealer Transparent All Weather Defense Rain Ready in Four Hours. So <clears throat> that would be this one. It's actually a really nice rich color where you can still see the laser engraving underneath. And you can see both the words and the drawing. I really like how this turned out. You also can kind of see the strokes of the paintbrush, which I think looks nice. Um, and the fact that it helps with protection against, you know, water and all weather systems is a very nice thing. It does require 24 hours of drying and one coat should be plenty. It's a little bit rough because I had some of my tape uh, stick here and so the paint didn't get all the way through, but I think in general it can be used in a very like controlled way. So I did really like this one. <laughs> Next, the paste finishing wax apply dry buff for beautiful luster and protection natural. What am I doing with a dog bag and cheesecloth on top? <laughs> well, when I read all of the, you know, harmful warnings about cancer and everything, and then it said, all right, put it in the cheesecloth and try to like rub it on your surface. I was like, okay, let's, uh, let's use a bag for some hand protection. But this is the weirdest one that I had. It says use it if you don't really care about the polyurethane protection that you want on your surface. 
Um, I had to go out and find cheesecloth because it's not a common thing at home. Um, I don't know, maybe unless you make yogurt or something. But this one was really, it, it kind of masked the laser engraving. So you don't see the clear crisp finish. Um, you can see kind of what's been rubbed on it, like getting into the laser engraving. So it, it doesn't look good. Um, I definitely don't recommend using this over a laser engraving. You could try it under and then laser engrave on top if you don't want to deal with polyurethane. Um, but I, yeah, I'm not a huge fan to be honest. Next, we're doing the Premium Oil Min Wax Fast Drying Polyurethane Our Most Durable Clear Protection Warm Satin. So you sand it first, uh, you stir well, apply thin coat with a high quality brush, and after three to four hours, sand lightly and reapply a thin coat. It's actually really interesting because most of them specifically say don't sand after you've applied it. Wait 24 hours before light use. So this one I actually really like. Um, it's, it's got more of a shiny finish, um, but you can see everything under it really well, really clear. It's like slightly warmer color. Um, if you want more of a warm, shiny finish, this is a good option. So I like this one. we we'll definitely use it again. Next, the lacquer. So we're doing Min Wax Clear Brushing Lacquer, easy to use, no sanding between coats, beautiful traditional finish, clear satin. And this is a, it dries in 30 minutes and every two hours recoat. They want you to do at least three coats, um, if not four. I kind of have this reaction of the lacquer because it is the worst smelling. It smells so bad. And they want you to do three different coats. So you have to go back in and recoat it multiple times. So I begrudgingly say that I like this because the experience was not as good, but I'm glad I like it because I got a bigger can. Um, it is slightly shinier on this one, but it's just really smooth and like, you know, consistent across all of it. You can still see, um, you can still see all of the laser engraving really clearly. Uh, it's interesting because the polyurethane warm satin is fairly close to the lacquer. The polyurethane warm satin is slightly shinier and you can actually see the shine within the letters, whereas the lacquer clear satin is slightly shiny but not like you can't see much shine within the letters uh, it just has a little bit of shine you know in the background so i would use that again i do really like it um it's a little bit more of a tamed shine but it, it looks good next we have the minwax premium oil gel stain multi-surface stain cherry wood so i really like the cherry wood spontaneous combustion so dispose the rag properly that you've used to wipe it on. Wait three minutes, wipe with the grain to remove excess, reapply it in eight to 10 hours for a deeper color. So this does recommend you know, polyurethane over top of it, but I did each of these completely separately because I wanted to see how they stood out on their own. This one, I love the color, so I'm glad I have you know, a big container. Um, it has really clear, fine lines, so if you have like specific surfaces that you need to have distinction and be able to tape it off. This seems like it does really well with that. It's a nice warm kind of brown reddish cherry wood. So yeah, I could see myself using that in the future. And it actually seems like it stains really evenly. So I like that. You can't see any like smearing between the laser engraving. It looks good. Last but not least, I have the Premium Oil Min Wax Poly Shade Satin and Poly in One Step satin pecan so this is quite shiny but it's really nicely even across um i do like this if you want like a slightly warmer color but not actually have to tint it you get a just a little bit of a warmer color if you'd like more protection then you can add a fast drying polyurethane on top of it this is a little bit more of a grainy texture uh so it looks okay. It's nice if you want just a little bit of warmth along with the shininess, but I'm not sure that I would go for this all the time. I would want this for something very specific that I was okay with that texture being applied to. Um, yeah, so that's my takeaway there. So my overall takeaways, do not use sprays. Make sure you use a ventilated space. 
Um, find a color that you really like because these can look great with laser engravings and then figure out which polyurethane or lacquer that you want to put on top of it. Don't get a wax that just mutes the colors and be careful with the very water-based, um, you know, finishes. You can probably shake it a little bit and be able to tell, um, but that ends up getting messy. I had a lot of fun with this. I hope it was helpful to you guys. And if you want to see my next projects on what I use to finish them and how they turn out, stick around, subscribe. <laughs> Thanks everybody for watching. We'll see you later.